Justin, everyone. <laughs> Hey everybody, my name's Justin. Uh, I've been here since April, and this is my first time presenting at a meetup. Woo. So, uh... <laughs> so please let me know uh, if there's anything I can improve. I'm always uh, open for suggestions. So like I said, my name's Justin Burris. I work for a company here uh, in Singapore called Neo Innovation. Uh, we're a Rails consultancy but we also dabble in Python and other things. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna go into my five tips. So um, I've been like really into spaghetti westerns recently. So I've tried to name these things after like characters that might appear in a western. Uh, so I'll start off with the quick draw. So uh, this tip works in uh, Ruby 2.0 and above. Uh, and I'm gonna talk about option and keyword arguments. So with Ruby, you can pass in a hash to your method, and that hash can contain uh, any number of keys inside of it, as you would expect. And then whenever you call your method, you can reference that hash based upon the argument that you specify. Now, what you can do with Ruby 2.0 now is you can have these things called keyword arguments. And so you can take this same hash, and you can now break it apart into separate keywords. But what's really nice about this is instead of referencing it as like options, colon, one of many, you can just say one of many. And this can really help to clean up your code. Uh, and it just makes it easier because you don't have to type in your, uh, your hash name every single time. Um, 2.1 allows you to have required keyword arguments. Um, but most people aren't on 2.1, so I didn't talk about that. Uh, the two is a reductionist. So one of the things that I think is really awesome about Ruby is uh, map and reduce uh, are really easy to use uh, just due to the nature of the way Ruby handles their enumerators. But unfortunately, a lot of times people won't really know like the best use case for map or reduce. And so I just wanted to quickly go over like how to use them. Uh, so map is pretty straightforward. What it does is it takes an array of things and then it enumerates over them, performs some operation, and then returns an array of whatever the, the result of your block is. So for example, if you have one, two, and three, and you map over them and you multiply them by some sort of secret value, which in this case is 10, you get 10, 20, and 30. So you use map whenever you want to have uh, an array as your result, in a sense. Reduce allows you to take an array or anything you can enumerate over, and then apply some sort of function to it. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm just gonna add in uh, the numbers to my accumulator. Uh, so whenever I reduce one, two, three, uh, I get six with this particular function. But you can uh, do anything like, you can take an array and like concatenate a string uh, from it, all sorts of stuff. And uh, like most enumerators, you absolutely can just use a symbol reference here and you don't have to have all this gnarly method stuff uh, inside your block. Uh, map is also known as collect. Uh, this is something I didn't know until recently. They're actually just the same thing. It's just some syntactic sugar. Uh, and the same thing goes for reduce. Uh, it's known as inject. So like sometimes I'll use one or the other based upon my mental model of what I'm doing. Like if I'm injecting something into something, I'll call it inject. If I'm reducing it down, I'll call it reduce. But they're totally optional. Tip three is the expressive regular. So regular expressions in Ruby are like really easy and they're pretty straightforward to use. Uh, you can just use slashes to delineate a regular expression, but it can get a little weird when you have like a URL, because now you have to escape these slashes and it just kind of looks ugly. Uh, it's hard to parse if you have a lot of these things. So what's nice though, is you can just use percent %r and you can wrap that thing in curly braces, and you can get that same regular expression without all the ugly escapes. Uh, so it makes it really easy. Tip four, the exorcist. So I've been working with a lot of system level code recently, and I have a, a need to daemonize some of my Ruby processes. And uh, I was using process.daemon, and this works great just to send your process to the background, but there's a small problem if you need a PID because your, uh, your, your 
process just exits. And so like your options are like, well, I could like look through all my running processes and grab the name, and that's just, it's just ugly. So you can just use fork. So whenever you fork a process, it returns a, a PID, and then you can just write that PID to like whatever your, uh, your PID file is, and then detach the process at that PID, and then exit your, your original process. And so this enables you to daemonize something and grab a PID from it. And you can also do some cool stuff if you want to have like two processes or whatever you want. All right, tip five is the hired guns. So uh, in addition to like some cool code tips, I wanted to give like some general Ruby and or uh, development tips. Uh, so I want to go over RubyLer, which is like a really awesome website that enables you to just type in a regular expression uh, and a test string here and then it'll show you what matches. It's super intuitive, very easy to use, uh, and has a quick reference as well. I also want to talk about Pry Remote. So a lot of people are familiar with Pry. You can open up like a, a console session that's like really nice and easy to use, but it can get a little more complicated when you have a setup like this. So if you have a Rails controller and you're hitting some sort of action inside of that, and there's something going wrong in there. It's not necessarily an error, but there's something you want to dig into. What you can do uh, with Pry Remote is you can just drop in this binding here, and whenever you visit your website at that particular action, you can just invoke it just by calling Pry Remote on the console. Now, what's really nice about this is if your, if your particular website runs in the background using something like PAL, or uh, any other uh, HTTP server, this enables, you, this enables you to grab onto your session at wherever you drop this binding. And it makes it really easy to debug. Now, this is, uh, you can use this in conjunction with better errors. Uh, better errors will do the same thing, but in the browser. Uh, the advantage of Pry Remote in this case, though, is that you get the full terminal, so you can do like tab completion and like all the sorts of things you'd normally expect out of a console. But I definitely recommend uh, using both. Uh, next thing I want to talk about Graphite. Uh, Graphite is like a really, it's a Python tool that uh, enables you to log a whole bunch of information very easily and very quickly over a UDP connection. Uh, and what that does is It'll just send off packets, and it won't wait for an acknowledgement or a reply or anything. So your uh, your server doesn't have to wait on actually uh, figuring out if it received the packet. You can lose them sometimes, so that's a disadvantage of UDP. But what's nice is if you're collecting a ton of analytical data, it makes it very easy to just pop it off and forget about it. And it does this in real time. So what's cool about Graphite is, let's say you get thousands of hits. A second, well, it just records it over a certain specified interval, and then it ships them all off at once. So you don't flood your server, which is really nice. And then finally, I want to talk about Remark.js, which is the tool that I use to build the slideshow. Uh, you can build your slideshow in Markdown, and it's pretty easy to use. Uh, I literally used it today, and this is the first time. And uh, if you want to talk to me, that's my Twitter handle. Uh, as you can see, I tweet all the time. Not really, I've had this account for years. Um, and thanks. Any questions? Have you had any success with Prime Remote and Foreman? I found that when I run a Foreman with mobile uh, servers, uh, I cannot access my Prime. Oh, it doesn't have the same sort of. Yeah, so I haven't had a lot of luck with Foreman, unfortunately. You can just drop in a Pry session, though, uh, binding.pry. Can, can I attach to a different process? Um, I don't know. Because I found that when you use binding.pry with Foreman start, which is like a normal sort of thing, it yep. give you a time session, like 50 minutes, and then cut off. Oh, wow. Like, what huh. yeah, it sucks. I haven't had that problem, uh, so maybe our Foreman setup is configured differently. Unfortunately, I didn't set it up, so I'm not exactly sure. Yeah. On that topic, so, same project a lot. We have had issues with Python, if I remember correctly. Like, there are two different debuggers, and depending on which one you're using in Ruby version, you might have issues with Python modes. There is an open ticket for that, and their solution is basically way fixing that. Okay. Uh, so, I don't remember which one. I think it's Python that's having issues with. We use Python and Pry as an so I think it's Python, not Python. Uh, so, Pi Bug and Pi Remote doesn't work at 
together. Okay. Um, but, so we noticed that in one part of the project where it just keeps refusing, refuses to work. Okay. And um, remove that and just start working. So it might be worth checking out what the bugging toolkits you're using and see if it's going to move. Well, uh, like I said, I'm always looking for input. So, uh, especially if you're new to Ruby and you're, or and or if you're very experienced, <laughs> I'd love to hear, you know, how you talk about.